So this morning, something unusual happened. I woke up and was reading the comments on my most recent YouTube video about LGBTQ Pride Month and what it means and how we celebrate and what does Pride mean to us. And usually I have very inclusive, loving messages on my YouTube profile. It's very rare I get something other than that. This morning, however, was an exception, and I thought <laughs> I thought it'd be a good teachable moment and that I should address it directly. So let's just, let's read to you what this person wrote, shall we? Non-binary is just a made-up word for people who seem obsessed with self-identification. This obsession can stem from a variety of different things, such as poor parenting, low self-esteem, mental illness, etc. Regardless, you have certain genitals and chromosomes which determine your biological makeup, identity, sex, gender. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but everything else is delusions of grandeur and self-perception. How you feel is one thing, maybe a million things for that matter, but the definitions of words stay the same. You can call my line of thinking transphobic or homophobic or bigotry, but a dictionary will call it logic and rational. The word binary refers to numbers, so if you say you're non-binary, are you implying that you're a zero? So maybe we just call yourself zero? When they dig up your bones in a hundred years, they won't have a clue as to your self-perception or sexual preference was, but they will know exactly what your sex or gender was. Trust me, I'm a random commenter on YouTube. Well, child, you got a lot of feelings there. And I'm just going to throw out there that my next YouTube video is on being triggered and why we get triggered and what it means about us. So that one might be a worth a watch for you. But let me just start off by saying I don't appreciate the unkindness. You are welcome to make any sort of statements you want. I am always happy to have uncomfortable conversations, but I res require that people approach everyone with respect, with dignity, with kindness, and that is what is severely lacking here. So let's talk about things first, about this idea that gender is set by genitals and chromosomes. There are more people that have genetic aberrations where they might be XXY, XXX, where they have untraditional chromosome combinations that don't neatly fit into either category. And in fact, scientists say that it's probably much more common than we think because so few people get tested genetically. Second thing, not everybody has just a penis and testicles or a vagina. There are people who have both. There are people who have a combination. Like those things are not set in stone either. But what we're talking about here is purely physiological sex. What you're talking about with self-perception is not that. What people are talking about is gender identity. Gender identity is totally separate. We have sexualities on, uh, we have a spectrum of sexuality. Are you attracted to same gender, opposite gender? We have a uh, spectrum on sex organs, masculine, feminine. We have a spectrum on gender identity. How do you identify as more masculine or more feminine? And then also gender expression. How do you present as being more masculine or more feminine? These things are separate and shouldn't be convoluted. And it's entirely possible, as I'm sure everyone can relate to, there have been moments in your life where you don't feel like you fit in with what society told you that you were, that you feel a little bit different. And so that means maybe you fall a little bit further on one side of the spectrum or another. So for myself, example, gender expression. I present a very masculine most of the time, right? Like, oh, I do wear kilts. Uh, I find them sexy. Um, but I generally present as very masculine. Gender identity-wise, well, I feel gender not normal. I've, as a kid, I never fit in with the guys. I, I All my friends were women. Like... I, un I prefer to read books and movies and listen to female artists that, that convey a more feminine perspective or, or a more gay male perspective, but usually I avoid things that are straight male, well, straight male singers, straight male protagonists, like it just doesn't speak to me. Um, so I'm not entirely gender normal. Even though I have a masculine body, I present as masculine, my gender identity is a little bit in flux. But this argument of it has to be one thing or another or in a hundred years we're going to dig up bones and again you're talking about sexual bodies biology you're not talking about gender and gender as we have learned it is something that has been very much constructed by our culture it's what people told us gender should be that 
girls should wear pink and boys should wear blue and men should carry guns and women should sew. Like, okay, are there certain things that we see masculine body people have greater proclivities towards and feminine body people have more proclivity towards? Absolutely. You know, as a young person, I was not rough and tumble like a lot of the other young boys were. That's okay. Like, yeah, I, I, and I see that guys tend to be a little bit more physically aggressive. You know, as my, my, my book came out, I got feedback saying, oh, you know, writing a gay fiction book is hard because gay men are visual. They prefer porn or even graphic novels. Women are drawn much more towards literature. And, you know, th there are some truths to that. We talk about falling in love and men are more guided by f what they see first and foremost. And women are more guided by emotions first and foremost. But like with everything in life, these are generalities. They do not apply to everyone. It is not inclusive of everyone and extremists. Like it is a guideline. And so it is entirely possible to be somebody who says, I don't fit within those guidelines. It's entirely possible to say, I don't identify with either gender. I look at what they say masculinity is. I say what they, they show me what femininity is and it doesn't make sense to me. And those people are beautiful and valid and sacred and whole. And so you random commenter on the internet, hate has no home here on my page. You will not insult the guests in my house. And if you have something that makes you uncomfortable, then that is fodder for conversation, not for attacking. And I will not tolerate it. So thank you for giving us this teachable moment. I'm happy to continue this conversation. And if you'd like to talk one-on-one -on -one with me, please reach out via email or DM because I am more than happy to listen and respond and turn this into a discourse. Thank you for your time.